we are. Stomach tin. Stomach tin. We're rolling. We're rolling. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're going to continue our trawl through the you know the credits at the end of a film. You know, of these various roles in the in the music department. We've come to music editing. Uh, Tony and James. It's you know talking to lots of people like supervisors, agents, fixers, as we've been doing for this series. It's mm. quite clear that there's a lot of bleed between the roles. I mean. Can you pinpoint what lies at the heart of music editing that makes it unique? What's the unique aspect of your jobs? Well, it's interesting you should mention bleeding, actually. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> well, um, oh, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Have we, have we even discovered that yet? After? What's at the heart of music editing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing that, that nobody else is doing, I suppose? Um, <laughs> I think we're kind of the... the go but the liaison if you like between the composer and his department and the uh, and the film crew the film team the editor of the film uh, yeah. the director you're kind of a representative of the composer to the uh, to the editor and vice versa as well you kind yeah. of represent the film crew to uh, to the composer and, and sort of try yeah. and yeah exactly i sometimes describe it as a sort of glorified translation team yeah. essentially not in not in every case, but you know sometimes the, the uh, very often a, a director will come to you and say, "Look, Tony or James, I I really don't know what a crotchet is. Uh, yeah. or, w- w- what's this bar stuff you talk about? That's where they sell the you know the, the drink." Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and you you have to sort of translate musically a little bit and make everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. It's not always the case because some some people, you know, do know what they're talking about musically. Yeah. And obviously a lot of composers nowadays who write specifically for film know exactly what they're talking about uh, in terms of film. So uh but that's often how I describe it to the layperson where we're a translator sometimes. Well, that's a really interesting way of putting it. I mean it's very easy to sort of slip into musical language that while familiar to anyone with yeah. even a passing, you know, experience of making music, actually can be really baffling yeah. to, to other people. You know? Yeah, definitely. Even terms like sort of bright or high and low. Yes. Like the assumption that that will mean the same thing to them yes. uh, as a non-musician is quite dangerous, isn't it? You know? I think so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I once had a cue described, or a composer's cue described by a, a, a famous director, I'm not sure whether I should mention his name, uh, as feeling slightly sideways. <laughs> and... Uh, to be honest, I, he was the sort of chap who didn't really know what why he was saying. Well, he knew why he was saying that, but couldn't articulate it. And, and it's, that was down to me then to try and... And that was all he said about the cue. It just feels sideways. Yeah. And then he moved on. And so we had to try and figure out what that meant and how to communicate yeah. that back to the composer who wasn't in the room, you know. It's like that. I, mean, I think there's always arguments about who first said it, but it's like that phrase, you know, writing about music is like dancing about yeah. architecture yeah. you know yeah. there is a lot of translation but if we focus on the on the editing part of the title because i think while you know say in things like newspapers or books there's there's a sense of different kinds of editing going on often editing you know to a lot of people might they might suddenly in, envisage pro tools and and the kind of minutiae of editing audio music editing though this you have quite a kind of high altitude view of all the music in a picture don't you in a sense so yes. can you talk can you sort of talk us through how the process starts you know who comes to you and at what stage in a film it kicks off i mean it depends on the the nature of the film but it let's let's assume we're talking about a like a non musical film where there's where there's where there's not sort of music on screen um, or people singing on screen and things like that. In which yeah. case, your we'll your involvement, yeah, yeah, that might be you might get involved much earlier with a film like that. Yeah. But uh, I think you, it's generally at the the kind of roundabout the start of post production um, in an ideal world. Sometimes it's sometimes it's when the editor of the film has kind of put together the first assembly of the film. So there's a kind of a watchable version of the film. It's normally sort of two hours longer than you'd want it to be. Yeah. Um, and at that stage the discussions sort of turn to music and so generally assuming there's it depends at that point then whether whether there's a composer already on board or not but sure but sure. assuming there is no composer at that time a uh, music editor might be called in would meet with the director the editor and and then might start to work on a temporary score which is where you take existing soundtrack music or whatever yeah. music you think is going to work and and kind of construct a score which becomes the the kind of the template almost for yeah. it, it gives an idea of where 
where the director and the editor thinks the music would, yeah. should be in the film, which parts of the film should yeah. have music and, and a flavour of the, the possible direction. And that's one of the most creative parts of our job because we, you know, we play stuff backwards... Uh, you know, with other stuff, yeah. upside down. We use samples to <laughs> sideways. bridge between sideways. <laughs> yes, yeah, sideways. Um, uh, if I impersonated the guy, you know who it was. Um, uh, uh, you know, we use samples to connect two bits yeah. of music that weren't, you know, from different scores. We'll, yeah. uh, as I said, you know, run two scores together or, or change the key or, yeah, or absolutely. change yeah. the tempo or do any, any of these sorts of things. Sometimes we, you know, we. we might be guilty of grabbing a grabbing a drum stem from somebody's cue, perhaps, and yeah. and um, so actually you are yeah. really you are really at the both looking at the whole picture, but yeah, but at that stage you really are chopping stuff at quite on a quite minutiae level. Yeah, know? definitely, yeah. definitely. It, yeah, I mean the the best uh, temp scores tend to be pretty uh, a pretty detailed piece of work. Yeah. It's uh, I mean generally just laying down a piece of music and letting it play doesn't doesn't usually no. do the job. So yeah. it's normally quite detailed it particularly with a kind of an action-y sort of film yeah it's definitely very rare instances when you just slap a, a, a cue I think that's what a lot of people think we might do oh I just you know yeah grab grab one and two yeah lay it on yeah <coughs> next that's it's not what yeah. we do you know we yeah. we have to get down I often describe it as that we've we've got the the um the duplo blocks yeah of, of, yeah. The, of the music you know we've got these stereos or we've got you know yeah the very least um you know some stems we can use um, whereas the composer has the lego and and the Lego Technics, yeah, you yeah. know, you can get in in right. And all we can really do is respray the block red, right? Uh, the big block red, or or perhaps lob it in half to yeah. create a kind of. Thing. So that's the sort of resolution you're working. Yeah, on. and also yeah. you may even write a cue yourself as a temp measure to. Yeah, sometimes um, you've probably done more of that than me, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't possibly <laughs> comment. Um, <laughs> right, we'll move on. Yes. Um, and, this is, at that stage in the process, it's clearly the editor and the d- director are, are at a point where they need that kind of, some kind of rhythmic <clears throat> backbone to cut to. Is that right? Is that yeah, what's happening at that yeah. point? Um, uh, very often that's the case. Yes, the 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 edit- I mean, often the editor has their own ideas about music and they put some music in um, to to give themselves a, a backbone, and that might yeah. already pre-exist when once okay. uh, um, Tony or I start working on a film. But um, they they certainly do use it's kind of sets a certain pace and yeah. sometimes I I personally find that that adding music to a scene actually exposes sort of problems with the film edit because because right. it suddenly suddenly it can either feel too slow or too fast okay. you think the music's just right and and this now makes me realise that, that the cut's not not quite right. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah. So it's it's, it's kind of a it's a it's a back and forwards process. I think mm. of the temp music. You do some music, kind of starts to work. They recut the scene. You recut the temp music, and it and and you so gradually hone together. it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm. So by that point, has what they call a spotting session taken place? Because I'd like to talk about, <clears throat> you know, how many people are there in the room for spotting sessions, mm. and how that sort of goes down, and where the hierarchy sort of sits. Yes. I mean, again, well, back, I, back to bleeding, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, uh, spotting sessions, I think, are becoming slightly rarer nowadays. Uh, only a little bit. It depends mm. on, on who you are. But um, very often I've gone into, uh, you know, I've got the call, oh, we, we'd like some help with our temp score, please, and, and, and we go in. And, and the editor's already... They've already figured out where they want the music. And, we, you know, we, right. we obviously talk about what each cue is doing. Um, but a formal sit down, you know, spotting session, it, they're getting thinner on the ground. We did one actually for the Martian, which was which was great. Going back to what you were saying about, um, you know, uh, editors putting music on. We we actually we did two spotting sessions for that. We did one with um, Pietro Scalia, the editor's temp score, yeah. and then we turned the temp score off, just totally muted the tracks and watched the film without anything, um, apart from the, the the disco tracks that were in that film. Because yeah, they were yeah. in the script, and it was a, it was it was an eye opening experience actually. Yeah, and that was um, that was with with just a um, uh, 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 director, editor, composer, and myself, which is sort of a classical yeah. Um, yeah, that's spotting weird. session set yeah. up. Yeah. But I haven't I haven't done one of those for a couple of years, and but it was uh, yeah, that's interesting. So when you arrive, often these days, mm. an editor has really already snuck on what yeah. they think. Yeah, basically, yeah. Mo- most yeah. editors like to cut. To music, certainly yeah. the younger ones, and some directors won't 
see, you know they, they they struggle to see a scene without yeah without yeah. without music. It's quite an unusual thing, particularly in a, mm. a an action, a typical yeah. sort of Hollywood action film is is usually kind of wall to wall music. Yeah. And I think when yeah. you when you take that away, like anybody would find that quite an unfamiliar experience to watch this action film with. Yes. Without, and also the the films are lacking the sort of quality sound mm. editing work as well at that yeah. stage. Mm. And and the you know the, the you, you, to watch a film with just the the on set sound and a few sound effects that the assistant editor's thrown in and no music it's I mean mm. it makes a yeah. film very hard to watch and you need to have quite a, a far sighted imagination to be able to watch a film and, and see how it yeah. could be um, uh, yeah I once heard um, <clears throat> I can't remember is it Canine Widowmaker it may not be yeah. Canine but that I heard or I watched cuts from that film without any of the sound design on yeah. and of course you know, you're in a submarine but the set was mostly wood yeah. so it was it was extraordinary people yeah. sort of stumbling around in a very obviously wooden place yeah. you know and yeah. then they put the sound design in but you're right yeah. the, there's a real there's a proper leap of imagination required to think yeah, yeah. where we can get to with yeah. all this yeah. I wonder though there's, a, there's a, a tendency at the moment for you know you hear it often there's too much music in films nowadays uh-huh. and um, I do I do wonder whether a, a, that's a slight hangover from you know they we've assembled a scene we've put some music on it and and that's that music has just sort of stayed you know and it yeah. and the whole film has filled out and and mm. and the assembly becomes the cut and yeah. and each of those you know there's still music everywhere and yeah. I, I wonder whether that's it know, never a uh, i think it never it never quite gets displaced by when when the final sound design comes along yeah. uh, much to the probable annoyance of, of our sort of sound editing colleagues it never gets fully displaced by the right. sound design where where perhaps it should a little yeah. more often yeah. because you tend to be working you've got the onset sound and the and the music because yeah. you can you can sort of wrangle up an orchestral recording of something yeah. a big orchestral recording very easily mm. whereas the sound design obviously has to be in sync with the picture so there's yeah. a bit more work involved with yeah, that sure. so so a lot of the time with a temporary version of the film you've got music and yeah. Sort of not very good dialogue sound and no sound design at all. Um, yeah, I but think that's yeah. another reason why it gets why there's sometimes too much music for this for that. Because it reason. goes in there early. I mean, I yeah. remember Mike Figgis talking about the warning directors about um, kind of almost like sort of Gollum getting drugged on music. As soon as you start putting music in, mm. it's like really hard to stop, mm. and it's very powerful. Yeah. Which kind of brings us to that idea of, yeah, as soon as music goes in, it starts laying roots, and then we get yeah. to that awful phrase, temp love, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, that, is that an issue, you Definitely. know, for you, when, when the composer comes on board and everyone's got very used to this temporary, useful, but yeah. temporary score? It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every, yeah. Every day, yeah. every day, unfortunately, every film, there's always something that that you know it's not quite what the temp was doing yeah um very often it is doing what the temp was you know a cue will be doing what the temp was doing yeah. and, and bettering it it's just that temp cue's been there yeah uh, i can i can think of the, you oh, know but, every yeah, single happens. film a particular spot um that uh, yeah we we've struggled with demo love temp love yeah one and the same yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. sometimes it happens with demos as well you know We'll, we'll have a composer's demo sitting in there, yeah. um, which might have been the first thing he wrote. Yeah. And because it had, a, you know, a, a mandolin or 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 something which which he he pulled out of the cupboard and just literally done himself or herself twagging yeah. away. It sounded dreadful, but it had a certain sort of yeah. intriguing quality to it. And then try and replace that with with a, a proper player in, in Abbey Road or Air or, or wherever, and it has a sort of clean, wonderful. But it. it doesn't quite yeah. sound like the demo used to, and that's demo love, which is the same thing as temp love. Yeah, it's f- yeah. familiar familiarity. Yeah, that's right. Is yeah. really important, isn't yeah. it? And it's, I mean, have you ever worked with, um, say, directors who are very aware of that and and really want to flip the process and say even even say want to get the music written for a scene and then cut to it? You know, like mm-hmm. the famous stories of the westerns. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or is it? Has that ever happened? I, I mean, I think that, that a, a lot of composers now, because you can make demos that sound so good these days, a, a lot of composers will actively try to prevent a temp score from happening. Mm. They say, if there's going to be a temp score, I'm going to write it basically, right. and so okay. they start to write with the early versions of the picture, um, yeah. and that way, I mean, the demo love thing can still happen, but at, the, at least they're not. The, the, the danger with temp music is you can sort of 
take you know the best of film music from yeah. anywhere you you like yeah, yeah. and that's already so um, polished <clears throat> like you exactly said, the yeah. sound is not yeah, it's a mix. Yeah. with the other yeah. processes yeah. you get this you get used to seeing it gradually improve and improve but yeah. if you just yeah. bang on a, an already mastered great orchestral recording yeah so. exactly and, it, and it's um you have to be a bit careful doing a temp that you're not producing a temp that the composer couldn't possibly hope to match whether it's because yeah. they haven't got enough like cash yeah, if, yeah. even even if yeah, just for yeah. that reason you don't want to put on an 80 piece orchestra if you know that it's that the the composer's only got enough money for a you know a balalaika and a yeah. and a drum kit or, or whatever <laughs> a trombone. it, it maybe a trombone a trombone, yeah. a trombone that would be ridiculous that would be yeah. terrible yeah. Yeah. That, that would be, <laughs> thank yeah. you that. so um, um Clearly, it's this isn't the case. So what I mean, the composer comes in. That doesn't mean you out the door, does it? Once the composer's writing their cues, how does your job then continue? Uh, well, um, so I mean, obviously, we'll have been through the whole process um, of, of where music sits, what it's supposed to be doing for a particular sequence, and we'll, we hopefully by that point we'll we'll have a good idea. You know, we'll be inside the, the director and the producers and the editors' heads as to what, the, what they want the music to do. And if the composer hasn't been involved up to that stage, which is, you know, often the case, you know, the, the, sure. they, these guys are the busy, especially these guys, they stack projects up and yeah. and they're busy and that's that's great. So they may not have had the time to be involved in that initial period. Um, <clears throat> we then are hopefully an invaluable resource to them. Yeah, because um, you've, uh, you've experienced. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we know where the bones are buried, and we can. Stuff. I've worked with with some composers who will, you know, put run cues through me by me first to say, look, what yeah. what do you think they might say, or what do you, do you think they're going to go for this? And I'm I'm always happy to help in that. Yeah. You know, I I have to preface every note with, listen, I I'm not them, but yeah, yeah. I suspect yeah. He, he might say or she might say, you know, what about a bit more tension here or. And then they'll go and do a version two, and and, and yeah. that will be the one that they run through. Um, that's a small example of, of of what we we do. There are other. Yeah, small, I mean, there's a there's practical. a kind of a technical, uh, mm, a technical, technical and practical side, as well. I mean, you you you've got the 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 constant shifting sands of the the composers writing to version two of a particular sure. bit of picture, and mean while while he or she is doing that, the you've got the editor is cutting the same. Yeah, sequence yeah. and so you you get a situation where the composer say da da here's yeah. this here's the music I've written for this scene it's and you and show. and you yeah and you <laughs> send it to the editor who says well we you know we've moved on yeah. so it's it's kind of dealing with that <clears throat> whether it be actually editing that we've come come to editing finally but whether you'd be taking the composer's music and editing it so it matches the new version of the scene or Going back to the composer yeah. and saying, you know, if you cut out two beats out of bar twenty-seven and change the tempo from here to here, then it's yeah. going to match the new cut of the scene. Here's what they've changed. That so kind like of thing. A, they're really useful. So it's kind of a te yeah. uh, there's a kind of a technical um, uh, conduit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conduit, I, suppose, I, yeah. I, I, I sort of look at myself as, especially with the guys who work in America, um, like I do quite a bit of work with Harry Gregson Williams, and um, uh, we are sort of the notes conduit. Yeah. Um, back and forth because obviously you know he'll send some pieces he works out in California he, he'll send some five or six cues a day usually yeah. and um, and we'll play those and uh, and we have to give you know obviously concise non-Chinese whispered notes back yeah and yeah. Um, and that's what you know it's coming back to what we were talking about as, as being translators yes yeah. that's, that's a that's a big part of it as well yeah. it feels like a bit you know big important kind of diplomatic role you know in terms of just managing people's you know, there's a sort of pastoral care almost there. There's sort of yeah. egos and all the rest of it. You there, know, there there is a little, yeah. I mean, um, some some people take notes better than others. I mean, yeah. I, I can totally empathise. You know, if I was sitting in my studio in Farnham yeah. uh, and, and, and having somebody else relay notes on on what I thought was, you know, yeah. I just I just slaved over. I, I know yeah. my reaction. Can you move it sideways? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Make it more sideways. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, I can't give notes like that. Yeah. Um, Whereas, whereas uh, <laughs> sometimes the directors will, you know, they'll call up the composer, and and say, well, yes, it needs to be more sideways. Yeah, and, and then and then <laughs> the composer will call you up and say, what? this director has <laughs> called me and said it needs to be more sideways. Can you possibly Can uh, you elucidate yeah. uh, uh, exactly? Oh, yes. That's, that's yeah. And, sharp. Yes, exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we will. But it's uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of politics and there's a lot of yeah. um, just be just being careful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, we're we're talking uh, about. Uh, scores at the moment um, mm. there are lots of other terms 
uh, you know, like pre-record and uh, music that fits into what we call the diegetic side mm, of it. Yeah. That you'd also be looking after. Can you sort of? Go, I've got one or two of them written down here. Pre-records and source, needle drop. Can you go through these terms a little bit for us in terms of other kinds of music that we might hear in a film? Yeah, and if they're part of the story or part of the that non-diegetic sort of background. Yeah, so there's uh, there's a few uh, a few terms. Uh, a pre-record um, kind of is what it suggests. It's some music you record before you shoot, um, okay. before you actually film a particular sequence, because somebody in that sequence is uh, like performing to yeah, it, for example. So if it's yeah, yeah. A, if it's a um, if it's a singer or something who's yeah. supposed to be performing on stage, you record it first. Yeah. Ideally, with the person who's going to be actually performing it, mm. if you're lucky, yeah. and then and then <laughs> they on on set they all kind of uh, either mime along to their own performance or use their own performance as a guide to. Gotcha. to so so yeah. you have a standard backing track. So if you record the scene, you know twenty takes of a particular s yeah. sequence then the backing track remains constant which means that when it comes to be edited together you sort of stand, uh, a, chance, the, yeah. a, a fighting chance that yeah. it will it will mm. remain in sync across yeah. all the all the various takes that's what a pre-record is there's all sorts of pitfalls with that though of course <laughs> the most typical being that the pre-record gets chucked out on the day of the shoot because they decide that actually what we want to do is we want to do this much more creatively and much more freely we're going to do it live at um, which point yeah. Are we into well, lay mis territory? Well, yeah, yeah, we might yeah, be yeah, into we'll lay mis territory. We'll <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so what else you say? Um, uh, source needle drop is, is a funny uh, sort of um, old-ish terminology now. It obviously <laughs> comes from you know the needle dropping yeah. down on a record, but as I understand it, that's you know that's essentially uh, a a source track. You know, a, yeah. a, a a a piece of music that perhaps you know we are uh, supposed to hear and the characters are not. Or I, I I don't know. It, it, uh, okay. it yeah, could also be. What's the, yeah, what's I the think it's just uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a it's a little bit vague actually. Yeah. That term. Some people use it to mean music where you can physically see the source of that music right. mm. in the scene. So if somebody actually puts a record player on yeah. in a scene, that's that's very yeah. uh, that's sort of clearly needle drop. And other people consider that term to mean. It's sort of any music that's already that, formed. That perhaps. sort of yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. It's already formed, so you might. Uh, so you know, there's a, a kind of a montage yeah. sequence with a piece of music that sure, that sure. could be described as needle yeah. drop. It's In my cool. own head, I think the the former definition more so is where the music is sort of audible to the characters in the yeah. scene. Yeah. I think um, they call it visual and non-visual now on, on the cue sheets, yeah. something yes. like that. So it, yeah. it changes, the definition yeah, of it changes. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I always I tend to think, well, can, can the characters in the story hear yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Or is it just us? And that's my sort of block, you know, rough. Yeah, I mean, that's the distinction for me between source and score. The source music yeah. is the music that the characters can hear yeah. or see, yeah. or can be, are aware of, mm. and, and score is the music they can't yeah. really there's also that really nice, I think it's Walter Murch term, uh, worldizing. Yeah. Have you ever done yeah. that? Well, I've never heard that word. Yeah, yeah I have. Uh, is that that's what he calls as in, you know, making stuff sound like it's coming from... Yeah, sort of like playing it back, say, through speakers. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. On the set, you know. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, that happens a lot with, um, well, not on set, but it happens a lot with sound effects, you know. The, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going back to The Martian a lot, but they, yeah. they did all the, the, the in-helmet... Um, uh, vocal recordings actually with a, a little microphone inside the helmet, you know, yeah, which was termed right. as worldizing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I didn't know he'd coined that phrase, but yeah. um, I've I've never done any of the. We we tend to, you know, we've got such great plugins like speakerphone and things like that that yeah. we That's that have all sorts of. of yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I remember doing. I did the Constant Gardener, and I was I was delighted. When this was back in two thousand and four or something, yeah. and Altiverb had just come out. Uh, or you know it was relatively young yeah. and I was I delighted myself by sort of putting it through a convolution reverb as a, 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 a you know a, a source track that they wanted to sound really naff as though it was in yeah. you know a 1960s radio and it, it played through the most terrible speaker with yeah. its cone hanging out on its wires you know um, and I, I put it through a washing machine sample. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, what's amazing about that stuff I I always think is it 
the, whatever the emotional content of the music, that's one thing. Mm. But actually, it's really strange how when you put it in different spaces like that, yeah. mm. it does change the emotional impact. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, yeah. Ma- it, it triggers. It's really unusual, you know. You run through those presets in those convolution mm. reverbs or speakerphone, yeah. and you suddenly put it through an old Baker light radio, and it's like your response to it is it is yeah. really different. It's quite know, a nice. Uh, I, I quite enjoy that that uh, trope that's used quite often in films, where you start with a song sort of playing over a big credits thing and then it sort of cuts and it's on the radio it's and it's there. the same song sort of yeah, going along yeah. but with a with a, a transition point yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah i quite enjoy that there's a few good ones in there yeah. there was uh, the there's, start of uh, the best exotic um the second best exotic that's film, yeah, yeah. Wasn't indeed. It? yes indeed um, yes going absolutely. into the car there's um there's a um, there's a film i'm doing at the moment actually where they're using a very old um uh 1920s blues track and um uh, but by a guy called I think it was Skip Skip Jones I think his name is, um, and it's one of the rare th- things where it's this, you know uh, American male vocal but with a piano not a guitar, uh-huh. and um, it's it's been in the cut for quite a while. I found it on Spotify of all things because I was just going through looking for this old yeah. Mississippi blues stuff, and um, the master came through the other day. And it's you know it sounded even actually even worse bizarrely than, than the Spotify because <laughs> right. it's so old and crunchy. But the director yeah. said, "Oh, really glad it hasn't come through, you know, uh, clean and cleaned up." up yeah. Because yeah. I love that. That's what gives yeah. it its character. It, actually, it gives the scene and the character in the scene a, a certain sort of yeah. gritty believability. Yeah, yeah. Believability, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting how that can change. It's funny how you know you reach a point of kind of audio perfection, and, and then and then you actually start going backwards by adding and hoping for all those old, yeah, yeah. you know, bits of wear and tear and life and history in, yeah, inside absolutely. the sound. We did we did sort of crash into musicals a minute ago, so let's go there. Um, <laughs> uh, you did Les Mis, is that right? Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, one of the the quite large team of music editors <laughs> yeah. on uh, on Les Mis. Um, that must be a sort of another level in your job doing musical yeah I mean that the that's the uh, what was the word not the apex what's the opposite the nadir no um, the uh, in terms of uh, the the sort of the technical music editing challenge that was by by a fairly long stretch the most challenging um, yeah. sort of music editing job that I ever did because because of coming back to pre-records uh, for Les Miserables we didn't use any um, right. So that that concept of using uh, using a backing track which stays the same, and therefore keeps everybody in time across multiple takes, we didn't have uh, we didn't have any of that. They were singing live on set, but the but it's not unusual for for a musical film to be made with the actors singing live on right. set. I think on mm-hmm. Mamma Mia, you yeah, yeah. <coughs> we did a sort of hybrid in in places on Mamma Mia. It was very very pre-recorded because okay. you know obviously these are ABBA songs and yeah. um, and. Benny and Bjorn were, were from ABBA were highly involved in the creation of absolutely everything, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, but there were points <coughs> uh, where, you know, if you're working with you know, people like Meryl Streep, you know, when she mm-hmm. says, do you know what, I'd in the verse, let's do it pre-recorded, but I'd like to do the chorus live because I, I think I can bring something. You know, they got into wow. stage where yeah, we yeah, were yeah. pausing the, the pre-record, which he, she had in her ear, and then she was just doing stuff live with um, <coughs> my musical director who was then sort of doing the chorus on a piano and then we'd wow. hit play to go back into the to the the second yeah, verse yeah. where she lips um, you know lipsing yeah. yeah so i just just nerdy and technically just how's this all working on set so you have you got in, someone in a blind who, panic yeah, yeah apart from the, yeah, the hysteria of it. Yeah. But, so i, I mean i don't know how much the two films share in this but so you, you if you're recording it live the actors are what all is it like a film situation where they've all got wireless and there's a boom, and and is it what a piano is keeping? It, it, time or? I don't think there are any set rules for right. this. It, it it's kind of how everybody decides is going to be the best thing. Mm-hmm. In yeah. in the case of Mamma Mia, yeah, we were we had um, uh, for for the playback stuff. We had we had the whole 
place induction looped. It's a bit like a hearing aid system. Ah, okay. And right, they have so these they tiny little things in their ears where they 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 could have whatever mix we decided to give them. You know, be it click, be it track, be it their, yeah. their pre-recorded vocal or or whatever. Les Mis and Moa Mir were both uh, recorded by the same guy, Simon Hayes, right? Yeah. And yeah, he's, exactly. he's incredible. And he's, you know, they won, yeah. they won the Oscar for that, yeah, quite yeah. rightly so. But he will go to any length to record good sound on, you know, be it a musical yeah. or, or, you know, uh, an yeah. action feature film, of yeah. which he's done very many. But the whole laying down carpet yeah. thing and really getting in there and walking onto that set and going, we are going to record good sound. Yeah. Um, and this is what we're going to do to do it. That was I, the understanding that they yeah, said. Yeah. They, they said literally the only way this film would be possible yeah. is if it was, if everything on this set is subservient to the recording yeah. of the sound, which yeah. is not the normal. I mean, no, normally no, the sound no. department is struggling and grumbling to get in, to get any of their yeah, stuff prioritised over yeah. what's. But he's he's quite a forceful personality. He, he is Simon, quite a forceful so. personality. Yeah, <coughs> he's also so, got black belts in several, <laughs> several martial, martial arts. arts. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. basically don't mess with the side. You know, yeah. it's, no, exactly. Um, <laughs> Memo to but self. He, yeah, he did a. Belt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he was pretty astonishing. Yeah, he was. But anyway, so yeah. coming back to where, where does this bring us when we yeah. come back into post production? Well, on Les Mis, then we we arrive at a situation where you've got multiple takes of the same song. Um, what about where's the tempo map? Yeah, the well, it's, it's, uh, 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 the tempo map doesn't really exist. Right. Uh, the film editor has to construct the song with a mind to the sort of the uh, the sort of macroscopic level of the artistic direction of the whole film. Yeah. But also on the microscopic level, song by song needs to cut the actual song together in a way that sounds musically plausible. Yeah. Um, and the only the only sort of accompaniment they've got at that stage to rely upon is the live recorded piano tracks. So you're essentially cutting together the song with uh, yeah. with the live piano, sort of kind of following the score and saying, "Well, yeah. you know, cut there, and cut there." Yeah. If you want to make it shorter, you know, right, these are the bars we need to cut, and there's no tempo maps. You just have to listen and watch and and yes. cut the film together, yes. and then you yeah. play back the film, and it's sort of this great big dramatic musical and, and it's all with plinky plonk sort of midi <laughs> piano, you know. yeah. um, I'm not sure you would um, yeah. and then and at that stage we'd then go away and um, and uh, get a we'd kind of tempo map those a scene would be sort of released say right here's this song cut version yeah. one we sort of tempo map that uh, tempo map that scene within Pro Tools and then somebody would orchestrate a, a demo for it, okay, uh, someone exactly. would program yeah. a demo for it. By which time they'd already cut it again. Yeah, of course, but the, yeah. the particular <laughs> challenge on that film, why there were so many music editors, is that that every time somebody changed one take for a different take, there was a new tempo map for that yeah. sequence. So that 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 four bar section that they used would get longer or shorter. Yeah. So so from the from the music team's point of view, actually, the the sort of uh, I dreamed a dream, the long. Um, the long single take uh, yeah. song was a, was a huge blessing for us because yeah. cause if you use a single take nothing changes yeah, lot, um, so yeah. that tempo map didn't really change because they said right this is the take we're using nothing wrong with that we'll, we'll use yeah. that and, mm. and so that was one of the first things that got uh, it, it does it got, sound like playing snooker with a bit of wet rope. Yeah, what did we yeah. used to say? It was like nailing a jelly to a <laughs> record player. I think that was that was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice development on wall. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. The, a wall was would have been too, too solid easy. a surface. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. It was like both both parts were moving simultaneously and trying yeah. to keep on top of it. We had a slightly different problem with Mamma Mia because obviously we're dealing with ABBA songs, you know, and they're yeah. very rigidly four four, and they just do that. Yeah, all the way through, and and the songs were. King, um, yeah. you know, if if the director wanted to change something pictorially, then we had to make up the time, because there was no way we were about to get a three-four bar into a four-four no. song uh, into mm. you know, yeah, the, one really of the most famous not. songs in the world. Yeah. I, I've done it. I've done well, it to actually, it. I've done it to a Queen song bar of five-four. I did get. Really? I got a, a seven-eight yeah. bar into Chikatita, which Benny heard. Yeah. And he said, "That's crazy. Why would you do that? I love it." Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, they decided to not do the picture edits, and my seven eight bar never saw the light of uh, day. But he, yeah, it's a shame. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I, lo I love to, I love to sneak it. I love to sneak a seven eight bar in. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I live for that. You do. <laughs> I prefer nine eight. 
Really? You weirdo. God, it's easy to Yeah. Yeah. 9 8 is usually a cock yeah. up, basically. <laughs> yeah. 9 yeah. eight's that's when you've miscounted. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I've done 5 16 somewhere. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Well, you get some editors. High level. Some editors could put 5 16s in, not always deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> Pick, picture Comes back. Yeah. 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 Seems fine to me. I just put a long crossfade on it. It does. It, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it does feel like your your kind of home is in the editing department I mean I know you're sound editors yeah. but it feels like your r- principal collaborator in all of this is the editor is that yeah well, I mean, not cer- principal collaborator but certainly on a on a musical film yeah. it, it is mm. I would say what? because the music's kind of pre composed if you like like Les Miserables already already exists as a musical so the mm. composer's job is is sort of greatly reduced he did all the composing in the 1970s or whenever it was yeah um yeah. i mean there, he still did a, there was still sort of incidental music and it was still kind of an arrangement job um but but the sort of the hardcore composing had already mm. been yeah. done so on that film you're dealing with the editor mostly yeah yeah um, our um our little pay slips that we get through from from the production companies always have me as part of the editorial department you know yeah, we're yeah. Bud- budgetarily if that's a word um we're part of the editorial department i uh, i've only recently sort of clocked that and gone yeah, yeah. I guess, do you know what i guess we are you know yeah yeah mm-hmm. um but <clears throat> we, you know part of our job is to not be you know i i want to ally myself with the composer and the director and the pro- I'm well, I'm yeah. with everyone because essentially we want to get the the job done without the music getting shafted yeah. somewhere along yeah, the line. Yeah. So it's a difficult yeah. one. As, you know, we are definitely part of the editorial, but but I also want to be seen as part of the composer's team. And yeah, yeah. the the harder you work with the editor, generally speaking, the better the outcome for yeah. for the music yeah. and therefore for your own uh, certainly sort yeah. of uh, uh, satisfaction in in the job. I mm. suppose. And presumably, if um, there is friction, set, let's say there's friction about. A composer feeling that a situation where some sourced music is being proposed, so so you might have a supervisor digging around for that, mm-hmm. um, but the composer feels very strongly that they want to do a cue for that. Mm-hmm. Or uh, are you like, uh, I'll hold your jacket, carry on, or you <laughs> do wade in and 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 have an opinion there about what would be most effective or. I was I was going to say uh, yes. You give give one opinion to the composer and another <laughs> one to the and the other one to the uh, director, yeah. the sound supervisor. You, you, you do realise that some of them might watch this. Yes, yeah. yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so, so so I certainly wouldn't advocate that. Um, I mean, yes. Generally speaking, I I, uh, I don't know about you, but I will generally uh, offer my opinion, whether asked for it or not, right. uh, on that kind of topic. Um, so. Uh, I mean that does it does arise, doesn't it? It, it does. It, um, it depends on the situation, yeah. you know. I mean, a lot. Of, I I sometimes find songs are chosen in films for reasons that go beyond the uh, the artistic, uh, yeah, the ne- immediate artistic needs of the yeah, scene. Okay. You know, yeah, songs yeah. are chosen because they'd be good for the soundtrack album. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Uh, that may or may not serve the purpose the most effectively for the film. I mean, generally speaking, composers like anybody don't like to see their music replaced by yeah. pop songs um sure but generally though as well <clears throat> I, I think quite some some composers will also resent the situation where there has been a source cue forever yeah on mm-hmm. a particular spot but they've run out of money or something yeah. like that and it's probably quite demeaning to to sort of be come to in that situation. Say, right. we've run out of cash. Can you add to your already burgeoning workload um, yeah, to to knock up a, to write this sort of doc, like, documentary yeah. film yeah. music that's on the t- yeah. playing on the TV? Uh, I can see how that would be frustrating as well. So yeah. there's that angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you write some? It, and it's usually something that's totally out of kilter with the other music they're writing. You know. Yeah. Can, yeah. Oh, can we just have one sort of? One cue with with Chinese instrumentation. So, uh, yeah. Thanks very much. That's Great. another. That's, that's another yeah. session's worth. You know, yeah, specialist yeah. four four players. players yeah. I've got to pay for to to come and do one cue for something. Yeah. Um, that yeah, is yeah, I think that, that does happen. I mean, Christian um, mentioned that he'd seen uh, the term music editor certainly as far back as say films like Some Like It Hot. Um, yeah. Has the job changed over the decades? Is it? I, mean, has it I, th- I think the the essence of the job 
has stayed the same, but obviously the technology is the major uh, right. is the major change. I mean, for instance, in you were dealing with in the in the you know people weren't making demos when some like it hot was around you'd kind of have the composer would be writing at the piano generally velvet jacket yes well, obviously yeah, yeah pipe um <laughs> the composer would, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on that hasn't changed <laughs> no that's, that's, that's the same actually um sorry we, we do wait till lunchtime generally yeah, yeah. um so the composer would be writing at the, yeah uh composer writing at the piano and yeah. uh, the director comes and the composer sort of plays the piano and says, and this will be the violins right. here doing this bit. Yeah. And, uh, and kind of basically sings it to the, to, the, um, to the director. I think generally speaking, because it was physically harder to cut film in those yeah. days, yeah. they had to, the, the, the concept of a locked picture, that is a picture which is not changing anymore, where the yeah. edit is no longer changing was a thing in yeah, the olden yeah. days which that is no longer really true. a thing yeah. I mean it doesn't the, the chances of you just recording a bit it, I mean it does occasionally happen I've just done an animated film like a stop motion animation film and they are sort of in the in the in the boat where this this sequence has a particular pace and you because yeah. of the, the way it's constructed and it doesn't change very much um, a few trims here and there um but generally, the locked picture doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So that's the main thing: is that you're constantly dealing with picture changes, really. Mm. Yeah, is that one of the? Because it seems that in all talking to lots of people, you know, for these videos as, as well as elsewhere, that technology has this way of pushing everything to the last minute. So as yeah. in, things can be adjusted until the last second. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's fighting to get. You know, yeah. it's already hard enough for the sound or for the music department because they are quite far down in the chain yeah. and then you get oh we can just tweak this and it's like yeah they've people yeah. have come to expect a lot more a, a lot quicker yeah. now uh, certainly in the last <clears throat> you know 10 12 15 years mm. um can 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 they do this can we open up the picture of course we can because they'll just fix it and they'll do it like that yeah. and generally we do yeah. but it, it's sort of the, the, the stress levels at certain points in certain films seem to have gone up a little bit for me right yeah. um, I mean there's, yeah. there's it's easier to change stuff yeah but uh, so that's a, that's sort of a positive but it's yeah. also there's, therefore there's much more gets changed yeah um, yeah definitely. so certainly in terms of the picture because it, it's all sort of digital until the very last minute um, yeah. the, there used to be this wonderful you know um, week or two weeks of picture lock to give the sound guys and to give the music guys their time to do their thing mm. and um, occasionally I come across one or two editors who say oh we know, you know yeah. to the director we, we need to give the sound guys some, yeah. some space and time to do that <laughs> and part of me thinks that's wonderful thank you the other part sort of things oh bless yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that's not going to happen yeah, yeah. I mean but, it's not you see picture lock so you see production schedules with picture lock written like yeah. in the, into the yeah. schedule now on the second to last day of the dub which is which is technically speaking at the end of that dub you're supposed to be finished yeah um wow and and the you know it's this gets this stuff gets it, it's they're not even uh, uh, sort of opaque about it anymore sometimes it's yeah. just right there yeah. it's written there there we go we'll lock the picture that day two yeah. days after release yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well no, exactly yeah. uh we did do a we did do i'm not sure i can say this careful yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah this wasn't a picture shame we did do it we did do a uh a very small sound remix on the day of the premiere of Les Miserables. Blimey. Ooh. Yeah. You didn't use me. It was, only a, it was only a remix, yeah, though. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a... It, it wasn't yeah. a We've, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been in situations where they've, they've cut the picture after the print master, you know, which is yeah. less, less crazy than the yeah. premiere. But, um, yeah, and then there's this lovely tendency to do um you know director's cuts and yeah and uh, um uh, different versions for different markets so you know I've done a chinese version where we uh, cut out certain bits that are culturally yeah, sensitive, culturally sensitive. Yeah. thank yeah. you very much yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh yeah there's, there's all that i think our jobs changed as well from the once we get to the music record it used to be very much that <clears throat> excuse me that uh the music editor will be responsible for sync uh, on the day, you know, Abbey Road or Air, um, 
getting the music in time physically with the picture was our responsibility. Yeah. You know, we used to have to run the click tracks and run the yeah. streamers, which were, were these visual cues that ran from left to right. And, yeah. and um, which uh, actually used to be drawn physically. The, the reason they, yeah. they still exist, they're generated electronically now, but they used to be, you'd literally take a chinograph, chinograph on, yeah. and, and draw, if you imagine drawing a diagonal line that's that's about that long uh, yeah. from across a piece of film, then as each frame goes up, then the then the line appears to move across the screen. So you yeah. you choose the place where you want the, the hit point to land yeah. in the music at the, at the far end of that line. And then you you sort of back time it so that the idea is that the, whoever's conducting has two seconds to to, reach to, a lot, to get themselves mm. to the hit point in the film. So that would all be music editors' work. Yeah, yeah in yeah. in the uh, yeah yeah absolutely. I mean, it still does exist today. Actually, uh, Dario still uses um, streamers. Yeah, but I we mean, generate quite, them quite a few. Yeah, um, from Pro Tools. Who did yeah. Atonement? Yes. Uh, Atonement. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, John Ottman still uses them streamers. I think. Um, uh, Howard Shaw still uses right. streamers, so uh, it's still quite. It's, a, it's still around, but uh, you George know, Fenton uses streamers true. still. Yeah, but more and more things. nowadays, you know, with the advent of all this stuff that we, we're surrounded by, um, you know, the, the the composer's assistants will have gone through and meticulously created those clicks and Click the, the Pro Tools right session. Is, yeah. yeah, it's it's all it's all locked in. You know, the the the, um, the cues will have been demoed to death. The the director. If he's there at all at the session, oh, yeah. we'll know exactly what he's getting, you know. And gone are the days yeah. where we would have to, the, the director would say, "Well, that's wonderful, but I wonder whether that hit could, you know, yeah. happen three, uh, um, you know, three seconds earlier, yeah. or something like that." And yeah. then we'd sort of look down and sort of madly sort of try, try, do try to calculate. Yeah. Yeah. I did do it on on Les Misérables actually when we rec came to record yeah. the orchestra because we'd constructed these uh, clicks. That were very very variable, yeah. Uh, sort of difficult to follow, and sometimes it went, if it was becoming clear that that they were sort of not quite getting it with the with the vocal that we were accompanying, essentially, then we were we were mass moving clicks around. Wow. Yeah. In the in the session, and and you can arrange Pro Tools in such a way that that the clicks will move according to the to the grid. Keep yeah, keep um, your own. Um, so you we kind of learned I became like a bit of a of a sort of a Jedi master at click <laughs> manipulation <laughs> at, for that state. I've forgotten most of the things but I could pretty much the yoga click, the Yeah, exactly. Track. I could have clicked my way out of the uh, It's scary though when you you got an eighty piece orchestra sat there and you know yeah. on, on, looking at you. Yeah. You could see you frantically like sweating yeah. away. It's that money counter and yeah. the LED graph <laughs> yeah. sort of going up. But um I did hear James that um, you'd worked on a film where and I think it might have been early on in your music editing career where there was a very sort of important emotional highlight but it was all being <clears throat> it had all been filmed at the Berlin Love Parade so there was a sort of yes. mash of all yeah kinds that of was music. A, yes that that was um, that sounds quite a tricky one that was it? that was uh, yes of course Christian would have would have told you about that one because I worked with Christian on on that particular film, yeah, we had uh, the, it was sort of the emotional high point of the film, and there was a piece of uh, there was a piece of score towards the end to to hit the to hit the sort of emotional high point. Uh, yeah. And this the idea was that the score was kind of going to emerge from the dance music that was that was being um, heard. It was kind of yeah. you were going through the streets and <laughs> going past various sort of sound systems that were generating dance music. And anyway, I'd basically beat match the music all the way back. Like yeah, as if it were sort of a DJ doing it, like yeah. all the way back about the full seven minutes of the scene, and then so every time we got a new cut of the scene, <laughs> instead of just cut it like dealing with the bit, but the sort of emotional high point and the score cue, I'd I'd have to like basically go right back all the way back to the start of the scene because it was like beat match all the way back. Uh, you must have a very high psychiatry bill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that was uh, and that was about the, one of the first films I I God. ever. Did really? Yeah, yeah. It's like God. I you hope know, it's not going to be like this yeah. for my entire career. Just um, staying with that, and, and it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Staying with that sort of theme of uh, last minute panics. Um, mm. If you if you're in the dub, I mean, a will you always be in the dub? Um, and b are there some things that just might need clipping the last minute, like say a you know a symbol hit over a particular bit of dialogue or something? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Uh, would that be your job to kind of keep an eye out for that or at least yeah. comment on what effect it will have if they definitely move? well to answer the first part of your question uh, yes usually the thing about music editors is, is we are a little bit of a luxury you know we're, we're a, 
uh, an expensive item that um, doesn't always get thought about in, yeah. in terms of production budgets. Um, but most of the films I've worked on, you know, it's a given that that if I've got got it this far, this is no, what's the point in not yeah, having not it at the dub? Yeah. So um, yes, I generally find I'm at the dub, uh, and all sorts can happen, you know, from from totally reworking cues to trying a cue that was at the end of the film at the front of the film even then it, right, it's yeah. becoming mm. less common I'd suggest because be, again going back to this whole demoing thing everybody knows what they're you know very often by the time we've got to that point we will have um, previewed the film with se- you know, several times with an audience with focus the demos grouped focus yeah. grouped yeah. it to death <laughs> and it, nothing should be a surprise yeah. but there are always yeah, one or okay. two surprises hopefully by that point um, you know I'm starting a film done next next week and and I fully expect that oh god I've got any wood to touch but but <laughs> I fully expect it's you know this video is going to go out after you've done yeah, that good, 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 good. so uh, um, we'll, we'll uh, good. see how close but, you were you know it will be all about you know can we can we duck that symbol uh, roll just or, or even mute it yeah. you know just because it, it steps on the line of dialogue that's coming up or you know it's the first time that we'll have heard the full sound work I was going to yeah. say that it's that's that's the most common thing that happens is yeah. that of course you've got the sound design you, you suddenly in. find yourself in the dubbing theatre with the with the final sound design and particularly I, I find like with something like a, a horror film or or action films where that where or particularly where the score has a sort of sound designy kind of element to it, yeah. you often find you things start to clash and you get yeah. sort of often you know it's particularly in horror type films or or yeah. horror, horror sequences the sound department will have put drones on and sort of things which have a pitched element course, and all of a sudden no, you go oh my god yeah, what, yeah, what is that yeah. awful racket and it's it's sort of a drone they've put in that's you know yeah. a quarter tone off from the pitch from the sort of fifth of the of the key yeah. note or something like that so you're there yeah. you'll be there to police that i mean actually you really touched on sort of my final point which is you, know, you mentioned that there's not there's perhaps not so much of this going on anymore i mean is it is it less common now for people to have a music editor and in a slightly uncomfortable way i would say you know can you explain why they should have them if they can afford them you know <laughs> um um, is it, is it, is it, is it yeah. sales pitch it's a, time? Yeah, sales pitch. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm a music editor. Well, yes, uh, you, you should have me. I think uh, I, I don't see it becoming less common, thankfully. Just not 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 yet. Um, right. You know, sometimes the, less time. You get less yeah, time than you used to. So you might have got three months once upon a time, and now you get six weeks. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I think the sound guys and the picture guys are always very happy to offload the music. You know, on the lower budget stuff. Um, it will, you know, the, the the composer might deliver to the sound team, and and when they have when they have to get involved in various the stuff that we do, and we can do, you know, quickly and hopefully musically and and well. Yeah. Um, the the sound guys, some some sound guys, not all of them, can get quite flustered, and and then they have to get involved in the politics of the whole composer yeah. relationship, which they might not have built up. So hopefully, we can just sort of take all that stress away. Yeah. Um, and actually save a little bit of money, to be honest with you. I've had a good yeah. a good one before where I'd done an end credit sequence for a film because they told me it was going to be f- five minutes long or something, and it turned out to be four and a half minutes, but I didn't attend this particular dub. I just sent it over to to whoever, to the sound department, wherever they were doing it, and the 30 seconds they chose to cut out of the, of the end credit sequence I'd oh, sort of meticulously worked on was was crunchingly horrible sort of about seven second crossfade that they'd managed to line up precisely with my own name <laughs> coming up <laughs> coming up on the in the uh, the credits it was it was uh, well, like another classic moment of my here career. My, in my monitor that we're we're starting to go out of sync with the orchestra so I think we should better leave it there <laughs> yes but, um, thank Fair you enough. both very much for sort of lifting the lid on music editing thanks very much you're Cheers. welcome.